Hey everyone, it's Lisa Stenz from Lisa's Creative Corner. I'm really excited about this month's Creative Design Team collaboration because we're talking about color theory, one of my favorite topics. Each of the design team members will be sharing one or more color theory concept in their video. Today I'm going to be sharing three different concepts. We're going to talk about monochromatic, complementary, and analogous colors. When talking about color theory and thinking about which colors you want to choose for your projects, it's really helpful to start with a color wheel to use as reference. This is Close to My Heart's color wheel with all of the different colors that Close to My Heart has, so we're going to use this as our reference. The first topic I'm going to talk about is monochromatic. So in order to create a monochromatic color scheme, you're going to pick one color and you can use any tint, tone, or shade of that one color. So if you pick pink, for example, and you want to add white or black to it, you'll get a lighter or darker shade of pink. Now you can see on this color wheel, which is one that I purchased from Amazon, that each of the colors has different shades and tints and tones and hues. So if you look at the colors, you can see the lighter and darker shades. So what you want to do if you're using a monochromatic color scheme is just choose one of those colors. For each of the three cards that I'm going to show you how to make, I'm going to use this stamp set called Friendship is a Blessing. And this is a special stamp set that is only available through Close to My Heart through the end of May 2021 and it's just a beautiful stamp set. I'm going to use the intense black ink to stamp the flowers in the corner of this white daisy cardstock that I already cut out from the largest stitched rectangle uh, thin cuts die. And I'm using the intense black ink because I'm going to use some markers to color it in and that way it won't bleed. I created a mask because I wanted to stamp a larger flower up above and I didn't want the stem of the flower to go into my stamped image down below. So I just stamped on a piece of scrap paper and used that as a mask. Then I stamped the sentiment in the lower right corner and I stamped these same flowers on a piece of scrap white daisy cardstock. And then I colored the flowers in with the pale pink blend tri-blend marker. And as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I absolutely love these markers because they have three shades of the same color in one marker, which is absolutely perfect for a monochromatic card because you have three shades of the same color. Once I was done coloring them in, I went ahead and used my micro tip scissors to cut each of the flowers out. Unfortunately, the next step did not get recorded. I was having some technical difficulties and I thought it was recording, but it wasn't. So I'm just going to describe it for you real quickly. It's pretty simple. Um, I used the Stitch Lattice Background Thin Cuts die and die cut a piece of ballerina cardstock, which you just saw very, very briefly. And then I adhered that to the card base. And then I die cut a piece of flamingo cardstock um, and adhered that to the card base as well with my stamped uh, piece of cardstock right on top of it. So you can see here that all three layers are adhered. Unfortunately, like I said, it didn't record while I was doing that. After I adhered those layers, I went ahead and added those flowers that I had stamped and colored in and then cut out right on top of the stamped flowers on the card base. And I used some thin 3D foam tape just to add a little bit of dimension. And I found these bashful pearls in my stash and I thought the color was perfect. It went along with the pink monochromatic color scheme and I was just trying to figure out where I wanted to add them. And I'm using a piercing tool which is really helpful to pull them off the carrier sheets and place them exactly where you want them on your card. And that finished up my first card. And I used the ballerina cardstock for the scallop mat, the flamingo cardstock for the next mat, three shades of the pale pink blend marker, and the bashful pearls, all in pink, to create my monochromatic card. For my next card, we're going to use complementary colors. Now, complementary colors are two colors that are directly opposite of each other on the color wheel. So, for example, these two colors here that I'm going to be using are yellow and purple. And I'm going to be using Distress Oxide ink colors for this one. And so I'm going to be using Mustard Seed and Seedless Preserves. And the purple and yellow, or purple and orangey yellow, are directly across from each other on the color wheel. 
I'm starting off with a cardstock base that I created from a piece of watercolor cardstock. And I'm using a circle thin cut die just as a template to create a circle because that's where I'm going to be putting my sentiment. And I wanted stamps and flowers around that circle. I'm going to create an embossed resist effect on the front of the card. So I used the anti-static pouch to add a little bit of um, powder to the front so that my embossing would only stick to the areas that I wanted it to. So now I'm using my Versamark ink pad and I'm going to stamp these flowers sort of around the circle. Um, and it doesn't matter what's in the middle of the circle because that's going to be covered up. So I'm going to stamp some of these flowers to the bottom right side and the upper left side. And I'm going to sprinkle some white embossing powder on top of this stamped image and I'm going to tap it off into this little tray that I have to catch any excess and then I'll use my heat tool to melt that embossing powder. And once that's melted I went ahead and I stamped the same image in the upper left corner in the same manner and then sprinkled some embossing powder on it and heat set it so that it would melt and that way I had a little bit of the flowers in the upper left corner and the lower right corner of that circle that I had created. And once those two were cool, I went ahead and took my Mustard Seed Distress Oxide ink and I just went direct to paper with it to get as much of it on the actual um, card front as I could and then I took my blending tool and blended it in as you can see it resists in the areas that are um, embossed. Then I'm going to put some of the seedless preserves ink on the very bottom and when you're using these distress oxide inks you want to make sure that you have a paper towel handy so that you don't touch the card where the ink is because it'll get on your fingers it'll make a mess trust me I've done it a hundred times and I'm always sorry especially when I have a lighter color and I have um, the darker color on my fingers so having a paper towel handy um, when you're using these inks is great so I went ahead and I went over the two colors with both of the um, blending tools and it just gave a nice little smooth blend in the middle. It almost made like an orange color when I blended them together. Having that very small blend in the middle really makes the complementary colors a lot more pleasing to the eye. Normally complementary colors are a little bit harsh, a little bit loud if, if that makes any sense. Um, so the little blend really helps. And then I'm taking a clean paper towel and just going over and wiping off any ink that's on those embossed areas and that way it pops a little bit more. And to have a little more fun with these Distress Oxide inks, I sprayed just a little bit of water on top to give it a little bit of a water droplet look to it. And these Distress Oxide inks, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, are so, so fun to play with. And there's so many things you can do with them. So water, they react to water really nicely. So I just wanted to add a little bit of um, water droplets to it. And now I'm just drying it with my heat tool. And I'm going to set the whole card base aside to completely dry while I create my sentiment. I used one of the Stitch Circle Thin Cuts dies to die cut a small piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to stamp the sentiment in the center with some grape ink. And as you can tell, I'm wearing a sweatshirt and my the string from my sweatshirt just got into my ink pad. That is a note to myself to not wear anything with strings when I am stamping. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this stamped circle as a guide to figure out where I want to place some of the other stamped flowers that I'm going to create. Now I'm just going to hold up the stamp set and try to figure out which of the flowers I want to stamp and where I want to place them. Now I'm going to take some of the scrap watercolor cardstock that I have left over. You can actually see where I cut the circle out. And I'm going to stamp some of these flowers on this scrap piece and I'm going to emboss them just like I did on the card base. And I'm going to create another emboss resist look. So I'm going to sprinkle the embossing powder on and heat set it just like I did for the card base. I'm going to use the same two colors that I did on the card base to create an embossed resist look for these flowers. So I'm going to use the, um, the yellow mustard seed and go over it with my 
foam tool and that will create a nice yellow flower and then I'm going to do the same thing with the purple flower and then on the leaves I might combine them to create a little bit of a blend. And then of course after I ink them I want to go over each of those images with a clean dry paper towel to wipe off as much of the ink as I can from those embossed areas. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out each of these flowers and leaves with my micro tip scissors. And then after I adhere that sentiment circle with some thin 3D foam tape, I need to figure out where I want to put those flowers and leaves that I just cut out. And once I figure out where I want to put them, I'm going to adhere them with some more 3D foam tape. And then to finish off the card, I'm going to add some gold glitter gems. And just like I did in the last card, I'm going to use my piercing tool to help me remove the gems from the carrier sheet and to easily place them on the card where I want them. I decided to put a few of the gems in the flower centers and then a couple gems around the edges and I think it finished off the card nicely. And now that this card is finished, hopefully you have some fun new ideas on how to use complementary colors on your projects. The next color scheme that I'm going to share with you is the analogous color scheme. And analogous colors are using colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. And you want to use at least two colors that are adjacent to each other, but no more than five. So I'm going to use these three colors here. I'm going to use purple, blue, and a blue-green. We're going to be using some more Distress Oxide inks for this project. And I'm going to teach you a fun smooshing technique where we're going to go ahead and put these three inks directly on our craft mat. And once you have the three colors on your mat, you're going to spray some water onto them directly to activate them. And then take a piece of watercolor cardstock and then just press down and get some of that smooshed ink right directly on your paper. Once you've done that, go ahead and dry it with your heat tool and then repeat the process as many times as you like. Each time you do that, it's going to add another layer of ink and more colors. And you want to make sure though that you heat set it in between, otherwise the colors are going to blend together and just and turn into a mushy brown, which is probably not what you're going to want. If you want more information on how to do this smooshing technique, I'm going to go ahead and put a link up above to another video that I created teaching you how to do the smooshing technique using different colors. It is just such a fun technique and I love doing this on different cards. So as you can see in between, sometimes I'll add a little bit more water directly to the cardstock and sometimes I won't. Sometimes I will dab it off with a paper towel. Sometimes I'll leave the water and just hit it with my heat tool. Sometimes I'll add just one color like I'm doing here because I wanted a little bit more of the purple. And you can just go back and forth as many times as you want to layer and layer and layer all of the fun colors on top of each other. So once you're happy with the way that the colors are looking, go ahead and dry it as best as you can and then set it aside to work on the rest of the card. Now I'm going to create the sentiment strip by stamping this sentiment from the Friendship is a Blessing stamp set on a piece of grape cardstock with some Versamark ink and I'm going to emboss it with some white embossing powder just like we did on the previous cards. Now that that inked up cardstock is completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach it to a card base that I created from another piece of watercolor cardstock. Now I cut down this piece of cardstock just a little bit so there will be a little bit of white showing from the card base on all sides. That way it's going to give me a nice, um, a nice border. Now you're going to get a little sneak peek at a product that's coming out next month for National Scrapbooking Month. And part of that is these layered butterfly thin cuts dies. And I just love these dies. I use the same colors that we used in the inks for these different layers of the butterflies. I used grape cardstock and I used sapphire cardstock and then I used a piece of the watercolor cardstock for the base. So after I die cut them out, I'm going ahead and I am just adhering each of the layers on top of each other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adhere this directly to my card base. I'm going to use some 3D foam tape to adhere the butterfly to the card base and then again the sentiment strip 
to the butterfly because that way it'll give it a little bit more dimension. And I've learned my lesson in the past. I always want to open up my card base before I start embellishing the front because I have many times done it upside down and so you notice that I just opened up the card to make sure that it opened on the bottom. And so once I have everything adhered to my card base, I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of sparkle. So I pulled out my Bluebell uh, sequins and I'm just pouring some out on a piece of white daisy cardstock so I can see them a little bit better. And I think I want to use the blue ones and the um, opalescent ones to add a little sparkle. I found this really cool jewel picker on Amazon that is really helpful for picking up these very small sequins and putting them where you want them on your project. And I'll go ahead and put a link down below to that as well. And so once I figure out where I want to have all of these little sequins, I ended up using some micro glue dots to adhere them. You could also use a little drop of liquid glass, but the micro glue dots um, seem to work pretty well for me. So that finished up my last card, and I really hope that you enjoyed these fun projects and learned something new about color theory today. Be sure to check out the rest of the Design Team members' videos this month as well. They have all kinds of great color theory ideas for you. I'll put links down below to each of their videos, and I'll also put links down below to each of the products that I used in my video. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in tomorrow to see Andrea's great projects. See you next time. Bye-bye.